Words understood why she was grumpy or anxious. In fact, words helped her explain what she was feeling, if only to herself. Hi everyone, welcome to the Reading Den with Shen. And I am Shen. Today I'm going to read with you and your family a marvelous autobiography. It is called Stacy's Extraordinary Words, written by Stacy Abrams, illustrated by Kit Thomas. Please give me a like, subscribe, share. This helps YouTube recommend my videos to others. Today, I'm giving a special shout out to Tammy from Los Angeles, California. Yay! Stacy loved words. She loved to read and write and say them. She adored fun words, long words, unusual words, words with wonderful histories and weird combinations. Whenever Stacy learned a new word, it was like making a friend. First, she would find the dictionary, then she would look up where the word had come from and learn its secrets. Did any of the letters hide and stay quiet? Like the P in ptarmigan, a bird that lives in cold northern regions. Or were they strong, like the I in bright? Next, she wrote the word in her special notebook of extraordinary words. She practiced how to arrange the letters just right how to sound them out, that's because she loved spelling interesting words most of all. With her favorite words, she would try to remember their quirks, what made them special. When she saw a super long word like onomatopoeia, a funny word to describe the sounds of other words, she had to jump and sway. Words like duckling made her grin. Persnickety tickled her tongue. Sometimes Stacy thought that words understood her better than people did. When she sat by herself during recess, they never teased her about being quiet or about being clumsy when she fell or awkward when the joke in her head came out wrong. When she read books under the covers, words never told her to go to sleep. Words understood why she was grumpy or anxious. In fact, words helped her explain what she was feeling if only to herself. One day, Stacy's teacher, Mrs. Blakesley, asked her to wait after class. She squirmed in her seat because she was afraid, petrified, another way to say, really, really afraid. Usually the teacher only kept a student after class because of a blunder, a mistake. Mrs. Blakesley called Stacy to her desk and she returned her spelling test, a big red 100 sat at the top of the page. The teacher asked her, do you know what a spelling bee is? A really smart insect? Stacy joked. The teacher smiled. A spelling bee is a contest where students compete to spell as many words correctly as they can. I would like you to participate. Stacy couldn't believe it. Who else would be there? I am nominating you and Jake. The spelling bee is next week. Stacy's excitement suddenly evaporated. Jake was not her friend. He was a bully who knew words too. Just yesterday, he had used a complicated word that made Suki cry. Last week, she heard him say something cruel to Zivko about his accent. Stacy thought it was stupendous that Zivko knew words in two different languages. Stacy knew as many words as Jake did. She wanted to say something when he said mean things to her friends, but she was intimidated, scared, because sometimes he said hurtful things to her too. She wished she had used her clever words to help Suki or Zipko or herself by speaking up. Perhaps at the spelling bee, she would be braver. At the spelling bee, she would not be silent. All week long, Stacy studied her spelling words from school and the ones she kept in her notebook. Still, the spelling bee felt as far away as the longest word she had ever seen, sesquipedalian, a funny way to describe words with lots of syllables. The days of the week were monotonous, torturous, and sluggish. Every hour felt longer and longer. Stacy wished for the week to whisk its days away. Finally, the morning of the spelling bee arrived. Stacy walked into the county library with her mother. 
Holding her hand tight, Mama gave her a big hug and whispered into her ear, Just do your best. Your dad and I are very proud of you. Stacy followed her teacher to the room where the other students waited until it was time to go. Then they went onto a stage. The announcer explained the rules. Kids stepped up to the microphone one by one to get their word. If they spelled it right, the announcer told them so. But if they made a mistake, a bell would ring. The student would have to leave the stage. No do-overs. Stacy's turn finally came. Her stomach ached with nervous energy, but she was ready. Say the word dither. Sound it out, dither. Spell it D-I-T-H-E-R. That is correct. The announcer called on the next student and the next. Promptly, enormous, shudder, transportation, craggy, reception, village. Finally, only three contestants remained. Stacy and Jake and a girl from another school. The girl went up to spell her word. Ding! She had spelled chocolate without the second O. We are down to our final two contestants, the announcer told the audience. Jake took a long time to spell except. Stacy got squeezed, but she remembered the lost letters she adored, like Q and Z. Jake tackled clambering. Stacy conquered disengage. Then Jake defeated geometry. Stacy returned to the podium, ready to do battle with her next word. She repeated it. She pronounced it. She spelled it. I-N-S-T-A-N-T-A-N. I-O-U-S. Instantaneous. As she waited for the announcer, the bell dinged. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The proper spelling is, Stacy couldn't hear the rest of what he said. Tears filled her eyes, but she stayed on stage like a good sport as Jake got his trophy and she received her second place ribbon. Everyone congratulated Jake and so did she. Good job. Jake laughed and rolled his eyes. At least I know the difference between an I and E. Stacy felt embarrassed but she refused to let Jake make her cry. Well, I misspelled my word, but I do know how to be courteous. You should try it. She turned away and went to find her mom. If today were like one of the stories Stacy loved most, she would have won. And Jake would have learned that words were a gift that shouldn't be used to hurt people. But things didn't always happen that way in real life. Sometimes change was harder and it didn't happen right away. Stacy felt a hand brush at her cheek. It opened her fist and smoothed out the ribbon. Mama, she put a butterscotch candy on top. Stacy's favorite kind. You okay? I lost, but you came so far, nearly to the very end. Not far enough. I got the letter wrong and I didn't win. I failed. You only fail if you stop, her mother reminded her. I know there's a word for that. You know it too. Stacy thought about one of her favorite words, perseverance, P-E-R-S-E-V-E-R-A-N-C-E. -E -E. Exactly. So let's go home and learn more words. There's always next year. Stacy imagined all the words she had yet to meet. New words and new ways to speak up and help others. She'd find them all. No, Mama, there's always tomorrow. The end. I loved this book. Thank you, Stacy, for all that you do for our world. And now I'd like to ask you a question. Do you have a friend that loves to read and you'd like to give him or her a shout out? Let me know in a comment. Thanks for hanging out with the Reading Den with Shen. I'll see you all soon again. Bye, everybody.